Welcome everyone to CMF Pariyaram today and good evening. Let us uh, go ahead with the message. Today we will be discussing about Jacob. <coughs> Let's read Malachi chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. This is a divine revelation. The Lord spoke his word to Israel through Malachi. I loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how did you love us? Wasn't Esau Jacob's brother? Declares the Lord. I loved Jacob, but Esau I hated. I turned his mountains into a wasteland and left his inheritance to jackals in the desert. Now, uh, it's this. I loved Jacob, but is how I hated. And we might ask ourselves, was God just in doing this? We shall contemplate on these things as we proceed with the message. Now, regarding Jacob, he was a curious person. Uh, in a sense, a bit of a controversial person, you can say. In a sense, his birth itself uh, was controversial, as in he was born holding his brother's heel. The Esau and Jacob were twins, and Esau came out first, and immediately following Esau, Jacob was born holding the heel of Esau. So in in a sense, uh, okay, you can, you can even even say they came out as one unit though interconnected now, this is somewhat controversial because in Jewish law uh, Jewish law says that the firstborn the firstborn should receive double portion of the inheritance double portion will correspond to around two by third two third of a father's inheritance and this would itself may have been controversial in that in a sense both of the twins were born at the same time and yes the name Jacob the name Jacob translates roughly to around cheat. Uh, and we read in the Bible that by offering his brother the lentil stew or the stew, uh, Jacob robbed uh, his brother Esau of his birthright. And we do read in other, other places where. Uh, do not be like is a memorial person who sold his birthright for a meal as a single meal anyway then yes robbed uh, Jacob robbed his brother of his birthright and then Jacob um, robbed him of his blessing these things we shall go through the specific verses in the Bible but finally he met his match in a sense uh, met his match in the shrewdness of Laban okay uh, and Laban ended up literally uh, fooling Jacob for uh, 20 years 20 years and this Jacob who had literally from birth onwards who, who been a little troublemaker now found his match in Laban but nonetheless even at the end of that also the Lord's favor was upon him may, may not be because he actually deserved it but because the Lord chose him and uh, as the Lord said he had always allowed Jacob now let's uh, read the portion regarding the birth of Jacob now the Lord said to her as in uh, Rebecca okay Isaac's wife Isaac's wife was Rebecca and the Lord said to uh, Rebecca two nations are in your womb and two people uh, from within you will be separated one people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger my dear brothers and sisters okay in, in the Bible this is can be seen as uh, path breaking in all, all the uh, situations even in the New Testament also in the parable of the prodigal son we found out that the elder son 
uh, was always there with the father uh, expecting the main share of inheritance expecting to take over and things like then and here we have God uh, telling uh, Rebecca the older will serve the younger again uh, uh, they are twins so it really doesn't matter uh, anyway when the time came for her to give birth there were twin boys in her womb the first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment so named named it Esau after this his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel so he was named Jacob Isaac was 60 years old and Rebecca gave birth to them now some of you might have seen this movie Okay. Anyway, we have some of these sayings like okay, if you have this particular name, he'll be a cheat, or if he comes from this particular background, they'll be bad, or things like that. We have uh, our society has a lot of stereotypes. Okay, I'm not mm, talking about the caste system that is a uh, whole and just is all together, but this is uh, I'm talking about stereotypes. Uh, stereotype is as such so okay and there is a psychological concept of a labeling theory labeling theory is a theory of how self-identity and behavior of individuals may be determined or influenced by the terms used to describe or classify them is associated with concepts of self-fulfilling prophecy and stereotyping but we as followers of Christ should be very careful to steer clear of any stereotypes, stereotyping others, stereotyping ourselves whatsoever. Okay, none of this matters uh, when we are in Christ. Now, again, uh, it is said in de addiction treatment and all that a therapist, okay, would be a psychiatrist or a uh, counselor, uh, therapist believe in that client's potential or motivation or say uh, faith that this person will remain sober uh, either uh, the therapist's faith or lack thereof will usually turn out to be self-fulfilling prophecies okay, it, uh, finally it in, in, ends up saying that if you believe that clients will follow through or if you have faith in the client you will put in more effort but if you feel again if the therapist has some serious therapies regarding an individual uh, then probably the stereotypes will turn out to be true probably may not be directly due to the client but because of the lack of the proper management because the stereotypy will hinder the proper therapy anyway now so Esau, I mean uh, Jacob learned from his mistakes or again uh, his mistakes or the mistake in essence so again the name Jacob itself uh, created a lot of trouble and probably yes it is because of the uh, stereotype itself that he ended up doing a lot of things uh, he did so he made sure that none of his sons had to go through the uh, same ordeal so we read in Genesis chapter 35 verse 16 to 18 later they set out from Bethel and while they were still at some end distance from Ephrath Rachel began to give birth and her labor was difficult during her severe labor the midwife said to her do not be afraid for you are having another son and with her last breath for she was dying she named him Benioni but his father, that is in Jacob, called him Benjamin. Now, Benioni could mean son of sorrow. When translated, it could mean son of sorrow. So, this Benjamin would have been uh, ended up with the name Benioni. Okay, and people would have started calling, okay, you are uh, miserable existence, or say you are caused the death of your mother, and so on and so on. But Jacob anticipating all this uh, literally intervened or literally jumped in and uh, named him Benjamin probably before Rebecca passed away I mean sorry uh, before Rachel uh, passed away and finally we ended up with Benjamin which means son of my right hand 
Uh, yes, that was about stereotypes. Now let's read another uh, again continuation of those uh, verses. Genesis chapter 27, verse 41 to 45. Esau held a great judge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But when Rebecca was told that her older son had said, he, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you, forget what you did to him. I will send one for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Now again, this is the same Rebecca who initially, when, say, yes, when, uh, Rebecca was the one who came and said uh, to uh, Jacob, okay, you, uh, instead of your brother, go uh, and pretend to be Esau and get the blessing or literally steal the blessing uh, from your father. And uh, again, uh, Jacob was afraid and he said, okay, I, I might end up uh, getting a curse, I mean, a curse instead of blessing. And Rebecca was, uh, said, let that curse be upon me that happens and this is the same Rebecca saying okay and now you have messed up I mean this is you got the blessing but uh, okay, you're in trouble so uh, run away and uh, run away uh, and let's read on I mean, I'm just uh, giving giving a context here so in short, okay, mummy said to a uh, younger son, uh, son, uh, hide for a while and I will call you back. Or when things are okay, I will call you back. For now, hide and things like that. And uh, things ended up like, okay, we read in the Bible, Jacob stays with uh, Laban for around 20 years. Okay, we if I read in the Bible how Laban cheated uh, Jacob initially, promising him Rachel. He, he, uh, he was fooled into marrying Leah. Then after that, he was forced to work another seven years for Rachel, and then again uh, several years for the flocks, and so on and so on. And he waited for around 20 years, and still no word from mummy. Uh, so. Uh, he would have been thinking, oh, no word from me, uh, is Esau is still angry, uh, will he come to kill me? Now all those things would have been go going on and we read, we read that uh, Jacob made some preparations. So Genesis chapter 2, I mean 32, verse 6 to 7, when the messengers returned to Jacob, they said, we went to your brother Esau and now he is coming to meet you and 400 met are with him. In great fear and distress, Jacob divided the people who were with him into two groups, and the flocks and herds and camels as well. He thought, if Esau comes and attacks one group, the group that is left may escape. So, uh, Jacob made some contingency plan, and then Jacob prayed. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown to your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper. And I will uh, make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. So Jacob relies on the promise of God. Again, we do see that Jacob still made some more preparations even after praying. This is just like us. Okay. We worry about stuff. We pray to God. I am praying to God. And then we give that worry to God. And after a while, we take that uh, literally or literally we uh, grab that worry 
back from the hands of God. So compare ourselves with Jacob. We also give myself especially make a lot of contingency plans and at times multiple contingency plans and then pray to God that we don't get into that situation where I actually forced to use them. We anticipate our troubles and worry about it before it comes. We worry about things and we give it to God and we take it back and, and the list goes on. So, uh, we do find that uh, actually, uh, and after doing all this, later he, he takes his wives and children and um, goes to the other shore, keeps them there, and comes back. So, after that, making provision, Genesis chapter 2, verse 32, 24 to 28. So, Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled him till daybreak, and man saw that. He could not overpower him. He touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go for it is a daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then the man asked his name, asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel because you have struggled with God and with the humans and have overcome. Now this is quite curious here yeah, yes uh, this is the an angel of God and when an angel asks Jacob tells his name okay uh, Jacob what's your name uh, Jacob or literally yes I, I am my name means cheat or I am cheat but then God uh, renames him as Israel okay uh, renames him as Israel this just goes on to say, even though we are faithless, God remains faithful. Okay, God does not call the justified, he, uh, he justifies the calling. Okay, uh, many of us we come to uh, be real followers in Christ only because of his grace that he had showered out on us. Now, uh, regarding this reply again uh, here uh, Jacob replies truthfully this is quite in contrast with the time he lied to his own father so this is the reference where uh, Jacob steals a blessing so Jacob went to his father and said my father uh, here I am he answered which one are you my son Jacob said to his father I am Esau your firstborn Okay, he lied once. I have done as you told me. Please set up, eat some of my game so that you may bless me. But Isaac uh, asked his son, How did you ever find it so quickly, my son? Because the Lord, your God, brought it to me. Again, uh, I don't know whether this qualifies for a lie. Okay, in a sense, uh, it was from the flock. They already had that. But yeah, it, theoretically it's a correct also because at the end of the day God brings everything to us anyway then Isaac said to Jacob please come closer so that I can touch you oh, my son are you really my son is how or not so Jacob came close to his father who touched him and said the voice is of Jacob but the hands are of his how is how would not recognize him because the hands were really like that is his brother is how so he blessed him again he asked are you really my son is how and he replied I am. So Jacob ends up lying around thrice to his father. Again, uh, uh, you might remember Peter denying Jesus three times. Anyway, something like that. But uh, when he, the angel of God asks, he replies correctly also. So we find in the Bible that uh, after. Uh, Jacob tried pacifying Esau okay, uh, after 20 years when Esau who approached uh, Jacob uh, he was amicable he was amicable and happy to uh, see his brother and they hugged and things like that so Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 to 10 but Esau said I already have plenty my brother keep what you have for yourself no please said Jacob if I have found favor in your eyes, please accept this gift from me. But to see your face is like seeing the face of God. Now that you have received me favorably, please accept the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. 
and because of is our insisted i mean because jacob insisted is our accepted it so to see your face is like seeing the face of god again can you be believe him saying this uh, around a couple of days back he was afraid oh will this man kill me this is my end uh, should i try to appease and now he's saying seeing your face is like seeing the face of god so we have a verse from the bible proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 when the lord takes pleasure in anyone's way he causes even their enemies to make peace with them or enemies to live at peace with them so god's favor is upon jacob so uh, is how or god change is how whose mind we actually is how not have to come with 400 people maybe he might actually have come with the ill intentions but god uh, changes are along the way anyway then that portion of the bible is not ex explicitly clear but this one it is genesis chapter 31 uh, verse 22 to 27 this is where uh, J jacob had left from laban without informing him and laban overtakes him on the third day laban was informed that jacob had fled so he took his relatives with him pursued jacob for seven days or took him in the hill country of gilead but that night god came to laban the aramean in dream and warned him be careful not to say anything to jacob either good or bad okay god came to laban the aramean and we uh, said be careful not to say anything to jacob either good or bad now see this is at a time when laban had other household gods as well we read that uh, actually uh, rachel had uh, stolen some of his idols and all and uh, uh, laban uh, in a sense was not totally devoted to yahweh uh, you might uh, say but here uh, god did appear uh, to laban and warned him uh, warned him be careful not to say anything to jacob either good or bad now now jacob has pitched his tent in the hill country of gilead when laban overtook him and laban his relatives came there then laban said to jacob what have you done you deceived me and carried off my daughters like captives of war why did you run away secretly and deceive me without even telling me i would send you away with joy and singing and with the tambourines and harps and this is uh, probably not uh, totally correct and uh, anyway laban had some ill intentions when he was uh, chasing after jacob but on the way god changed laban's heart or in a sense god uh, uh yeah coerced uh, laban into changing his heart so props 16 and 7 keep that in mind and my dear brothers and sisters first corinthians uh, chapter 2 verse 9 however it is as it is written what no eye has seen but no he has heard but no human mind has conceived the things god has prepared for those who love him do we really believe that or do we go about our lives uh embracing mediocrity and just going on just like that or do we really believe no eye has seen no ear heard but no human mind has conceived again for those who are academically oriented also you might think okay i'll get university first try i'll get uh, pg entrance first try is that enough is that all uh, okay that everyone conceives that almost ask any uh um, first time baby student he'll uh, want say oh i want a distinction and things like that but uh, is that enough or is that what we are striving for no we should strive for something greater something greater and making that difference in the world and that does not come through us but by the power of the holy spirit working through us now in the past week i found myself anticipating a lot of problems I was anticipating, you know, but now I, as I progress in uh, my walk with Christ, I understood that I should instead have been eagerly waiting for opportunities where God can display His deliverance. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So, 
when problems arise understand that these are opportunities for god to display his deliverance and what no i seen no hear heard no human mind conceived await for those love god and uh, coming to the end of this presentation okay uh, we have read some things about jacob and we again uh, at the very end we find how uh, jacob's son joseph goes on to become second in command of egypt and actually we read that actually his brothers joseph's brothers had sold him to the slave traders and they then sold him back to egypt and things like that but finally they are united and in the meanwhile after being reunited later jacob dies so when joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead they said what if joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did him so they were sent word to joseph saying your father left these instructions before he died this is what you are to say to joseph i ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly now please forgive the sins of servants of god of your father when their message came to him joseph wept his brothers then came and threw themselves down before him we are your slaves they said but joseph said to them don't be afraid am i in the place of god you intend to harm me but god intended for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives so then don't be afraid i will provide for you and your children and he reassured them and spoke kindly to them so joseph asked am i in the place of god see god's ways and our ways are a lot different god loved jacob and eden so we don't god's ways and our ways are a lot different god sees the hearts of men the intentions of the hearts of men and such instances where we feel that we have been forsaken god would be uh, using it as an opportunity so as to save lives save many lives not just those of israel even from egypt so what did uh, god promise abraham we read in the last week's message okay and you will be a blessing now uh, and those it says all the nations shall be blessed through you now again uh, see here uh, the brothers are going your father left these instructions before he died okay i would like to end on a lighter note we have this uh, departmental joke where usually our chief usually tells okay tell the uh, okay an assistant professor uh, our chief has okay tell the assistant professor okay yeah, tell that the chief asked him to take duty on that day they, they will not uh, uh communicate directly okay tell uh, okay pg uh, or anu uh, uh, or ben please go and tell uh, system browser to take duty that day uh, it goes on like that and we are like what they are just uh, uh, 100 meters apart what are they saying and we find this uh, similar uh, jokes in some of our families also where the mother and father are fighting and we end up the mother end up uh, not speaking to the, uh, uh, her husband directly and he says son please tell your father mother is tired you can uh, have dinner from elsewhere then uh, uh, father uh, replies uh, and tells the son son please tell your mother uh, uh, anyway your mother's food uh, doesn't taste anything uh, good at all i would rather have it from outside from, from our hand and this goes on and the poor child in the uh, developing age things so wh- what is happening and they are right next to each other why, why are they using me as a media so anyway uh, on a light note see this um, joseph's brother were uh, saying uh, your father left these instructions before he died okay he might actually have really done that or we, we, we don't exactly know in any way case we understand that jacob had learned the hard way that he can accomplish only so much through his own efforts he learned to rely on god more and more see okay i had a seminar or there's a seminar on attachment disorder there is something called known as helicopter parenting where 
her parents attempt to solve all their children's problems and assume responsibility for child well being well into adulthood and so the child never develops a strong belief in his or her own ability to solve their problems so some of us like are like that also we get over involved we should understand that it is only through the holy spirit that things work out we are just instruments and when our ego starts getting in the way of our ministry know that you are going down a slippery slope so this is some sort of a relation grid you can be either too bossy or too kind as in you cannot say no or if at all something happens to your child you feel very guilty but the appropriate approach is a good enough carer and i believe in new approach anyway uh, that's a separate one hour topic all together now second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 but thanks be to god who always leads us as a captives in christ triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of knowledge of him everywhere my dear brothers and sisters as we go about this week let us all uh, stick fast that great calling that god has for us and let us learn from our mistakes by uh, jacob let us break all these stereotypes and let us learn to lie more and more on god and let us not o- o- overdo it so no not overdo it and when our difficulties comes let us understand that these are opportunities where god will show us difference thank you all amen